These guys are getting a little feisty over here. Look at these guys. Come on, stay in there. Probably one of the most common questions I get asked all the time is, why do I work with snakes? And to be honest with you, I really don't have an answer for it, you know? It's one of those things that, as long as I can remember, I've just been completely obsessed with them. What I mean in this case is that I just don't have an explanation of why I've been so obsessed with snakes my entire life. Literally, since I was born and can remember, I just absolutely love snakes. And I guess for me, the kind of pinnacle of keeping snakes is reproducing them. Now that doesn't mean that you can't keep reptiles or snakes and not breed them. There's nothing wrong with that because they make great pets. But for me personally, the challenge of breeding them and successfully breeding them just takes that passion to a new level. And speaking of that, Trevor just told me that we have another litter of rainbow boas. And I'm gonna show you these guys right now. There's some new babies here, so uh, pretty awesome. So what do you say we pull this cage down and go ahead and pull some baby snakes? All right, guys, so here we have it. We've got uh, mom over here under the paper. We have uh, babies kind of scattered around here. We do look like we have a couple babies like this one right here that is still in the yolk and that's usually not a great sign and of course we have some infertile ova here these are uh you know basically slugs those are um un those are unfertilized ova which basically is just like when you have a infertile egg that is the equivalent of a live bearer of infertile eggs because again these are obviously live bearing snakes so uh let's just go ahead and collect them and see how many babies we have i'm a little bit concerned because usually when you see some slugs like this it's not quite as big of a litter and you guys remember some of my big litters. As a matter of fact, I'll put an annotation right here uh, of the biggest litter of rainbows I've ever had. But uh, this probably isn't going to match that one. But, but hey, any baby is a cool baby. So let's take a look. This one looks good. But see, it's got a little bit of a yolk sac still on it. But that one still looks like it'll be fine. This one's got a really cool pattern. Take a look at that. That's crazy looking. And it's got a little yolk. So that's two. Here's some. There we go. Five six whoop this one's feisty seven eleven these guys are getting a little feisty over here look at these guys keep her covered because she'll bite me so that's 12 and I'm, what what's this it, look at that this is actually, it's weird. This is a, you know, obviously a dead baby here, but look at how small it is. It's just weird how sometimes something like that will form. Mm -hmm. And obviously it died early in its gestation, but look at how tiny that is. But that's a bummer, huh? That's just the way snake breeding goes. Sometimes you get good litters and sometimes you get so-so litters. This wasn't that bad. There's only uh, a couple infertile eggs. One that I'm a little bit sketchy on because it's still in the yolk and it's got a really big yolk sac. Those usually don't make it. Uh, but we got 12 good babies. So, hey, listen, that's pretty awesome and I'm pretty excited about it. We'll get her cleaned up, get that one baby in a moist box to hopefully see if it'll absorb its yolk sac and uh, then get the rest of these babies set up. So today we have just a handful of tasks to do. It's actually the weekend here. And I just realized that this is my first weekend back in town, kind of alone without company in about two and a half months. So it's kind of weird to be here on a Saturday with no one else here. But we have a few things we have to do today. I have to set up baby snakes, uh, baby ball pythons in particular, because we have a bunch hatched and we had a new shipment come in. I have to assist feed the ball pythons that didn't eat this week. And then I have to just do an overall check of the entire collection to make sure everything's okay and that it'll make it through the weekend without any disasters that I have to take care of. So uh, let's get this started. So I'm gonna get things started by just basically checking some of the animals I fed yesterday. And again, I'm in particularly checking animals that haven't fed in a few weeks. Just to give you an idea, when a baby ball python hatches, it'll shed about seven to 10 days after it hatches. Then I offer food. If it refuses food for three weeks in a row, then I'm gonna assist feed. So I tried to offer some of the animals yesterday what haven't fed for the last few weeks. If they don't feed today, then we'll assist feed them. All 
All right, just topped off a couple waters, checked everything. Now I have a count for assist feed, so I've got to thaw out some rodents. Let's go. So I want just kind of like lukewarm water here. You don't want it to be too hot because then it'll kind of cook the rodents a little bit, but you don't want it to be too cold because you want them to thaw out. So uh, lukewarm water is probably perfect for that. Now I've showed you guys before how I assist feed ball pythons. I'm just very gently just going inside, putting it in their mouth, and letting them actually eat it. That's gonna be the progression I need to make sure they're gonna eventually eat on their own. So I'm not force feeding, I'm assist feeding. So that was the last one. So we're gonna give it about 15 minutes or so, go back through, check them to see if they ate. Most of the time, the majority of meat, if not, will go back and refeed them. Uh, again, usually you'll have to do this assist feeding maybe between one and three times, typically before they start feeding on their own. Um, and if they don't after three times, I actually uh, will do an assist feed and then choo-choo train a mouse right at So as they're finishing the fuzzy, a mouse goes in and it gives them a nice big meal and that almost always pushes them over the edge. But uh, we'll come back in a few minutes. All right, so now that that is done, it's time to set up some baby snakes. I've got a bunch of stuff that just hatched and I got a shipment that I gotta get put away, so we have to just set them up and go from there. Guys, take a look at this one really quick. It's really cool. This is actually a fire yellow belly. So the yellow belly makes that really cool pattern right here. And then the fire gene is just really a light gene. So basically what you have going on here is this one, if you breed fire to fire, you can get the black eyed Lucy's. But that yellow belly, if you breed yellow to belly, yellow belly, you get ivory, which is kind of a black eyed Lucy. So it's kind of a mixture of the two black eyed Lucy producing animals in a way, but really a stunning snake. And finally, the last animal right here, a little purple passion. Now that's a gorgeous snake. All right guys, so I'm basically done for today with the snake work anyways, but there was one thing that I wanted to kind of bring up to you guys to get your guys' opinion on things. You know, this vlog is five days a week and it can't always be about snakes, right? Because I can't do five snake bites episodes a week because it's just too much work and I'd run out of topics and you guys would get bored by it. So the idea of this vlog is to be about my life, not just as a reptile guy, but everything else. I do a lot of really interesting things. I'm never really relaxing or calm. And the problem I'm having here is that when I do a show like feeding big snakes or baby snakes are hatching, you guys watch and the views go up. But when I do something that's outside of the reptile world, sometimes our views are a little soft. And I wanna know from you guys, seriously, is it that you just don't wanna watch that type of stuff? Or is it something that I'm doing that you'd like to see besides the snakes? So essentially, maybe you don't wanna see me travel to Washington DC, but you'd like to see how me and Lori are outside. Go ahead and comment down below. I really need you guys to really help me through and understand what I can do next. Because basically, guys, this vlog can't really exist and grow to the level I need it to be if it's just about snakes all the time. I want you guys to understand that. I need to draw on people that are interested in an unusual lifestyle. Hey, there's some guy that makes his living breeding snakes and then travels all over the place for animal adventure. And then maybe they'll start watching it and then I can preach them the message that I really love snakes and maybe we can make them not only snake lovers but animal lovers and wildlife lovers. So I really need to know from you guys, am I on the wrong track here? Do you guys think that maybe my life outside of the reptile business is interesting enough that you'd want to watch? You know, tell me what you want to see. I need you guys in order to grow. We're five weeks into this experiment of vlogging and I'm having an absolute blast having you guys along. But I need to know to get to that next level, what do you guys want to see? Just let me know and how can I break out to that next level? I would like to know your advice. Who knows, maybe one of you guys will really give me the best advice in the world and it'll really help take this vlog to the next level. I hope you guys have an amazing time and remember to always keep that passion that you have for whatever it is, but especially wildlife. 
I'm actually really excited right now. I'm heading home. My daughter's coming back into town and she's bringing something I cannot wait to meet. And that's a little puppy husky. You guys know I love my girl Artemis. She comes to work with me every day and I love huskies. It's really my favorite dog breed. And my daughter got a little puppy recently and she wants to kind of introduce them to our dog, Zeus and Artemis, to make sure that they're gonna be able to cohabitate when she goes out of town and we have to watch them. So uh, I am super excited to meet little Miko, but I'm also pretty nervous because I don't know how Zeus and Artemis are gonna react to this stranger in our house. But uh, fingers crossed, guys, let's hope this goes well. Trying to wear my puppies out so that uh, when the little new puppy gets here, uh, they're a little bit less energetic. Come here, puppy. Okay, you're gonna be good. My daughter just pulled up. The puppy is in there. We've got Artemis and Zeus over here. I have no idea how they're gonna react. Hello, Miko. You're such a cutie. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with you already. I'm in love with you already. So it's really dark, so it's going to be hard. So we're going to try to reintroduce them inside again. Basically, what happened was Artie here, this girl was absolutely incredibly good. She seemed to love Miko, and she's totally cool with him. Zeus, on the other hand, wants to seem to eat him. Oh my gosh, it is the cutest little puppy. Thank you for being so good. I wish your brother and Zeus would be good. So finally, Zeusy is starting to calm down. Let's hope it's gonna work out. We still haven't been able to let Miko on the ground, but uh, at least he's sniffing them and not trying to bite them. So that's a good thing. So uh, progress, still have ways to go. No bite. Miko is going to bed and we're going to try again tomorrow and see if Zeus gets any better. 